Hello, everybody. It's Stacy from The Advisor. I'm here today to introduce a very special guest. Her name is Raina Gandhi, and she is an amazing individual. And she's going to talk today about the challenges women face in leadership. And she has some great advice for women out there who are struggling to maintain leadership, to become one of the best, hit their goals, and really reach the accomplishments and dreams that they have set in their mind. And she's here today to teach you how you could actually become a great leader in your industry and in, in the things that you do in life. So Raina, it's a pleasure to have you here and I'm so excited. Can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. Thanks, first of all, Stacey, for having me. I'm, I'm so excited to talk about leadership and I'm so excited to be here with you. It's always really fun to, to have this conversation with women because I feel like the energy is always so positive and, and supportive, right? Um, yeah. So again, my name is Raina Gandhi. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Rising Tide Consulting. Basically, my role in that is I coach women who are facing either internal or external barriers. So internal barriers might be something along the lines of imposter syndrome, or they have a very loud negative inner critic, um, or external barriers might be not being able to negotiate their worth, or not asking for that promotion, or not being able to advocate for themselves if they want to be on a specific project, right? So we have all of these barriers that face that we face as women. And oftentimes systemically, it's just not set up for our success. And so a lot of the work that I do is centered around what's called women-centered coaching. And so I, it's developed by women for women, and it really gets down to the root of what are some of these limiting beliefs and how can we, uh, how can we overcome some of them? And how can we recognize them and then how can we of course overcome them but then also how do we change that narrative in minds? right exactly now what are some of the common problems that you see in today's society for women who are struggling with maintaining leadership qualities yeah i think that oftentimes what happens is they don't get to the leadership stage they oftentimes they'll leave the workforce before they get there because they face all these other barriers. When they do get to the leadership phase and they are on the, in those positions, they end up bringing their masculine energy because they want to fit in with everybody else, right? So they'll come to the table, they'll get their seat at the table, and then they'll bring their masculine energy because they want to fit in and they want to make sure that they are not singled out in any which way and treated differently. So what ends up happening is that women don't use what makes us authentically amazing. We right. are fair, we are nurturing in a, in a very, but you know, tough love, powerful, positive way. Um, we are good, uh, we're great listeners. All the things that make us who we are, we're not able to necessarily bring that because uh, like I said, we don't want to stand out. And I think part of that is also, um, you show up, you, you get signaled out and then organizations miss out. Right. Yeah. So organizations are missing out because they're not getting the authentic you. The whole point of having a diverse table is for different perspectives. But if you're not able to bring that and if you're not able to bring your authentic self, then then that kind of defeats the purpose. Right. So organizations are missing out from your perspective and all the things as well. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I think a lot of it too, and I know you had mentioned it previously, a lot of times it's women lacking confidence in themselves and lacking self-worth. And if you really have confidence in yourself, you'll be able to just be who you want to be. Now, what are some of the things that you find? Do you find that there is a large group of women out there who lack the confidence and that's why they don't get up to that leadership level? And if it is, you know, what are some things that you could suggest to help people boost their self-esteem and really have self-belief and develop self-worth? Yeah, I think a lot of it comes from a narrative that we were told or taught when we were younger. I have a lot of clients who say, I was always told by my parents to sit quiet and sit pretty and and not not argue and all the things that they grew up thinking was not the right thing to do or the right way to behave and so then they go into the workforce and they have a difficult time advocating for themselves they have a difficult time negotiating for what they know that they're worth or what they want uh, and so it 
it limits them. It limits them in how, so they want, they yearn for something more. They want to make a difference. They want to get on those leadership positions, but they yearn for all those things. But there's some kind of a block that's just not getting them there. So the right. idea is to really do a lot of self-reflection and understand. Uh, I try to do oftentimes a, uh, a future self-exercise. And so we think about what is it that we see ourselves without any of those distractions and without any of those observations just how right. do we see ourselves five years from now ten years from now and women they find that very uh, interesting because they learn about things that were somewhere deep inside them that they didn't even know existed right so a lot of their priorities come out at that point and we start there and then we think about where are the gaps between where they are now and what it means to get there. And that they don't necessarily have, I want to be in five years, I want to be in this exact role with this title. And it, it's not that, it's they have a bigger picture of where their joy is coming from. And then we think and we stop and we say, okay, here's where you are now, how do we get there? And what are the steps that we need to take? Where are the gaps? And then we think about why are those gaps the way that they are? Those gaps yeah. are there because of these narratives and because of these ideas that we have of ourselves, which may even have been the case 20, 30, 10, five years ago, but not necessarily anymore, right? The narrative yeah. changes. We change, we grow, we evolve, we develop. And so the idea is to be able to recognize when those limiting beliefs come in and then yeah. being able to change that narrative and then have a different self-concept, like create your own new self-concept that this is who I am. This is who I want to be. This is what I'm capable of. The reasons that I think that I was not capable don't exist anymore for me. And that doesn't mean everything is that way, that none of it exists. So you do have to, you go through a lot of, of self-realization and self-reflection, but you end up really understanding where some of those those blocks have been all this time because yeah. none of us have time to think about all of this, right? So yeah. I'm not going to sit on my own and, and realize these are the five, 10 things that I need to do. You need to work with somebody. And I think coaching is so different from therapy because therapy is we're thinking about what happened in your past and you know how can you use that with trauma and other things. This is very different. It's not that we don't look at the past. I, I, you know, as I mentioned, we do look at the past, but what we're thinking about is, how is that going to help us in the now? And how is that going to help us in the future? And um, so it, it's just a different, it's a different take on things. I also think it really helps to have somebody who doesn't know you very well, who can be a lot more objective about what they observe about you, because oftentimes we don't see things within ourselves anymore either, because we have moved up that ladder and we are surrounded by all of these, all of these, all this noise telling us that, you know, you're, just either whether whatever kind of affirmation it is or whatever kind of feedback it is, it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just yeah. there. And then that's what we think that we have become because other people are telling us, whereas, you know, as we all know, no one knows the true person other than themselves, right? More than themselves. A hundred percent. Oh, definitely. And I, I think, you know, um, it's really great to have a coach because a coach keeps you on track. And, you know, a coach keeps you accountable to what, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. And because it's so easy to get off the track, you know, and, you know, when you're working on someone's self-esteem, are there anything that you suggest to people that could help them, even little exercises at home that could, you know, maybe help them build their self-esteem up? Yeah. You know, I think one is surrounding yourself. We were talking about this earlier, right? Surrounding yourself with other women who are going to lift you up. It is amazing when you have your group of women who, who support you because they keep it real, but they uplift you and they've got your back and they know you really well. So they know where you can use leverage your strengths, right? I think yeah. there's a lot of that, a lot of the ability to leverage your strengths in your personal and your professional life. And it's not always going to align but what are some of the things that women yearn for? If we yearn for more work-life balance, mm -hmm. balance is a tricky word. It's, I think there's, we're probably looking for work-life harmony, you know, and yeah. if we're looking for that, then what is keeping us from that? And so if we're at home and we need extra resources, but we can't afford them, I always say, what can you take off your plate if you're going to add more to it? 
right? Yeah. Uh, and I think sometimes we forget to do that and we forget to take care of ourselves and we hear it all the time. I mean, my mom used to tell me this all the time. If you don't, when my young, kids were young, if you don't take care of yourself, you're not gonna be able to take care of your kids. Yes, yes, that's great. But in reality, that doesn't necessarily always work. Right. But now having gone through a lot of different things and being in a different stage in my life, I realize that I really am my best self when I am in a place of centeredness and I'm not anxious about trying to, you know, so there, there's going to be a stage in people's lives where they may be carpooling or they may be asked to do multiple jobs because somebody left. There's going to be points of stress. Yeah. Being able to recognize those points of stress, to sit back and say, all right, again, it's always about here's where I am. Here's what I want to be. Where are the gaps that are that I'm missing? And then being very honest with ourselves that, you know, why asking the why? Why am I insisting on not delegating? Why can't my partner do the carpool this week? Why do I have to do it? Why do I insist that I have to do it? Why? Um, why not let somebody else on the team go on that trip since that's just not going to work very well for me it yeah how much of this is what we put on ourselves too right, right. um again i was telling you earlier about how i was bullied in my role and i it's very easy for me to say well she said this and she said that and she made me feel like this but that's what you do you stop and you think what is it within myself that i i allowed this to happen and i couldn't control it but how i what I can do is I can control how I react to it. I can't control what other people do, but I can control how I react to it. So really being self-aware of what some of these strengths are of yourself and bringing those forward and hyping yourself up and meditating and doing yoga. And I mean, you, again, everyone says exercise and good eating, but it really does. It makes all the difference for, for us because those are things that we can control. And what I'm realizing with women also is, we like to have that because there are a lot of things that we cannot necessarily control right. again because of societal pressures or whatever it is systems. And so I think that's a big part of what we yearn for. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And one of the things I like you said that, you know, who we surround ourselves, you know, I was at a uh, Grant Cardone uh, convention. And one of the things that they said was the five, the, the five people you surround yourself with, are the people who you will become. And so it makes you really think about who you are surrounding yourself with, you know, what family members, what friends, what coworkers, you know, who are you surrounding yourself with? And that really plays a huge role because if you have you go-getters and you have people who are high achievers around you, you are going to become motivated to become a high achiever. It's just the energy, the vibes that play off of each other. If you have someone that always complains and always is negative, you know, just like if we all have those friends too and family members, when you're with them afterwards, you feel like a vacuum has been sucked out of you, you know, it's, and like all your energy is just like... You know, but if you surround yourself with positive people, you feel really pumped up. You feel energetic. You know, you can you can tell when you're around the right people just by the energy in, in the room when you're with them. And it, I think it's so important, too, is that if people want to become successful leaders, they really have to look at who am I surrounding myself with? You know, and I really think that's an important factor. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, think about it when when kids are young, we tell them. You know, who your friends are is very important, but that doesn't change when we become adults. And right. I also think what ends up happening is in the workplace, if it's a toxic work environment, then people feed off of each other and that toxicity and people are negative and they complain, they need to vent and all of those things that might be the case. They may need to vent sometimes. We all have bad days, good days, all the things, but when the environment becomes toxic and yeah. there isn't any action that's being done to change that then no. it becomes very demoralizing right so when you take yourself and sometimes women especially oh i can make it work i can make it work it'll be fine it'll get better we, i don't want to change i don't want i don't want a new job but the for me the moment that i stepped away from my last role i had a lot more control over who i was around and yeah. I still have many friends from my job 
that that role and I see them often and and it's it's amazing and we don't talk about all of that that's still going on there but what we do talk about is all the wonderful things in our lives and I've surrounded myself I'm part of certain organizations where people will reach out to me and say what can I do to help you how can I how can I be of service and those yeah. are the kinds of people that I've surrounded myself with especially in the last year and it has elevated me my vibration my my happiness my joy, my ability to get be more productive in life, um, and and my motivation to help others, lift others as well. Right, that's why my my company is called Rising Tide because I I genuinely believe that a rising tide lifts all boats, and that if we work on ourselves, we can all lift each other. And ours, it's our success. It's not your success or my success. Or hey, if you succeed, that means I will too. Or if I succeed. That will mean that means that you you will too. What it means is we'll do this together. We're a team, and that's how that's how we'll all be lifted. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, when it comes to leadership, like what are some of the things that you could you know? Because there's lots of people that want to be a leader. They want you know, but they're scared, and they're scared of of failure, or they they're scared that they can't do it. You know. What are some things you you have to say to them? Those people who are afraid to take the leap and afraid to be the leader, even though in the back of their head they they would love to, but they don't have enough of the confidence or they don't think they they will be able to handle it. You know, what do you have to say to that? Yeah, I would first start with where do we see that lack of confidence coming from? Let's do some digger, you know, let's do some deeper work, dig a little bit deeper. And so we would try to find the source of that. Uh, I would ask a lot of questions and we would find the source of that. And then we would do the work of that was the narrative. What is the narrative now? How is it different? What have I learned that I didn't have then when I was telling myself those things? What tools do I have now? And focus on the positive things that you have to contribute. I think many of us know that we can do it. We're just really afraid. So what yeah. is causing that fear? And what's the worst thing that can happen? Right. If you go for it, what is the worst thing that can happen? If you want a raise, if you know you deserve a raise and you can go to your boss and say, these are the five reasons I know that I can do, or, or you want to be a, in a new role, somebody leaves and you want to backfill a higher role. I've done these five things. And I think that's very, you know, at that level, and I, these are the reasons that I'm going to be able to contribute at that level, and I have institutional knowledge, you give them all the reasons that they can't really say no, because it's very right. clear that you do belong in that role. I don't think that we're unrealistic. I think that we set ourselves short, um, yes. that we make ourselves small, right? So yeah. trying to understand what does it take? And if you have those things, or even if you have 50% of those things, that's the other thing. When you yeah. see women and men apply for jobs, men will maybe have 30, 40% of the job requirements, uh, they'll, they'll, you know, the required skills, they'll have 40% and they'll apply. Women will have closer to 90 and then only apply, right? So yeah. it's, you're not necessarily you're not going into an so it's again it's that narrative you're not going into this role because you know how to do everything already you're going into this role so that you can also grow and that you can help the organization grow based on the different various experiences that you've brought right so instead of thinking i'm not good enough i don't know all these things wow i have all of this other experience i am so so excited to learn more about the things that I don't know yet, but this is what I have and this is what I'm bringing and this is what my worth is, right? There's a big difference in the way you approach this. So yeah. I think that that helps a lot. No, I, I think it does. Definitely. And I liked your comment too, is that it, you know, with work-life balance, you know, if you're putting too much stuff on top of the list, you know, like we had a gentleman come on, his name was Roger, and he, he he's part of our podcast community. And he had a great scenario, he had an analogy, you know, people talk about um, work life balance. And you think about the, the, the sometimes you go to a circus, or you go to see an entertaining act where they balance the plates, and they have like, they're holding, they're holding like a pole, and they're, they're, you know, they're putting plates on top of plates, and, and they're spinning the plates. And, you know, one is going to work, two is going to work, three might work. But you know, when you get to six, what's going to happen? 
happen. You know, they're going to fall and they're probably going to crash. So, you know, it's really um, looking at what you're capable, I think, of handling. Everybody has their limitations, you know, and and if you you're you're overpassing your limitations and you know that you're you're doing a lot because you're starting to feel that burnout feeling, you're starting to feel stressed, you're starting to get anxious, all those things. I think, you know, you really have to prioritize what's really important. What is going to get me where I want to go? What is my main goal? What am I looking to accomplish? And then prioritizing that. And then if you have a long list, maybe not knocking off the things that don't really matter, you know, like, you know, that you could put aside for a rainy day and it's, you know, if it does, gets done, it gets done. If it doesn't, it's really not important. You know, what do you think? Yeah, I, 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 what you were talking about reminds me a lot of this need to be perfect and this perfectionism piece. I was talking to a client yesterday and, and she was telling me about how she's had a really tough time separating from doing a job and doing it really perfectly. And then it takes more time and it takes time away from other things in her life. And so again, we went back to, all right, where, where is this coming from? Right. Um, and turns out, we were able to figure that out in 15, 20 minutes uh, where right. it was coming from. And, and, and so this need to be able to do it all at the same time, not need any help and do it perfectly because we're not used to asking for help. I think that is changing. I think women are starting to realize that it's actually a lot more fun when you're also in a, in a group, in a tribe, trying to do these things together and lift each other up. I think that's a big part of it. I think that, there is a little bit less elbowing out of other women when you're trying to get to certain positions because everyone's priorities are different. And that's the other piece of it. Your priorities are going to be different at different stages of your life. And sure. so those of us who have been through 20, 25 years of work, I'm looking now, I'm looking back to see how can I support those women who didn't have the resources that I didn't have, they still don't have them. How can I change that? Um, right. and, and likewise, the mentors that I have who are, are saying the same thing as opposed to saying things like, um, I had to deal with that. So now you should have to deal with it too, right? You want right. to separate yourself from people like that. You don't want to be surrounded. By, those are not your people. Those are right. not your people. I think coming to re that realization is also very difficult because you want to fix it. You want to make yeah. it better. You right. think that it's going to get better, but it doesn't necessarily do that. So knowing, having the capacity emotionally to let go and moving on from a job and not saying, I'm going to make it perfect. I'm going to make it great. Sometimes you don't have, it, sometimes it's just the, the cards are stacked against you. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Yeah. But I think coming from a more objective place is right. really important for women. No, I, I agree. I agree. And I, you know, a, a lot of women, you know, we're, we're born to, you know, have a lot of different hats. So, you know, we're, we're used to like juggling and, and doing things and, and, you know, going from role to role to role to role and, you know, and, and, and balancing yourself, like you said, and prioritizing is, is important, you know? And um, I think, I think, you know, as we, we get older, you know, it, it's, you know, you have to come to the realization where you can't beat yourself over the head if you can't do everything in a day because there's only so many hours in a day I think and and people try to get so much accomplished and I think that's one of the reasons why burnout occurs so quickly with people is because they they keep trying to accomplish and finish and finish and finish and that might be that women mentality because we have so many roles and we want to get things done and some things we have to get done but you know you can't you can't succeed if you if you're if you do too much because then you're gonna burn yourself out and you're not gonna be able to be that ultimate you that person that you really are I think. I mean, think about it. If you if you only have so much capacity and you're always at capacity, when are you resting and regenerating and thinking about? things that you want with your life or how to move things forward. Or if you're always doing, you're not necessarily spending a lot of time thinking and yes. we need to do both. Right. Yes. And also come, it, it often comes down to, and I use a lot of analogies with, or I use a lot of examples rather with children because I have, I have a 20 year old and a 17 year old. And so when they were growing up, if I had the choice, if I knew that they were going to be in bed at eight o'clock, 
I wasn't doing the dishes at 730. I was with them. I didn't care if things were not picked up. I didn't because that wasn't my priority. I wanted to spend time with them and I wanted to cuddle and read books and do all the things that we did. And we had a routine, you know, all, all of that. Or we, we traveled a lot and they needed to be flexible and adaptable. And so we needed to be flexible and adaptable, right? right. So um, we, we bring it where we want to bring it. When I need to be flexible and adaptable, I'll bring it because that means I get to travel and I get to do all these things and I will literally lose my mind if I'm not. <laughs> um, right I, I won't I just won't be successful at it and then I'll stop traveling right. and then you know that that won't be fun that that's not who I am authentically I am somebody who just loves to be out and about and, and doing things and learning about new people and cultures and all of that right so knowing who you are and understanding what it means to have some of the things you're not going to have everything you know that when my kids were young I was a scuba diver I am not I am a scuba diver and when my kids were young I couldn't get on a boat for four hours and leave them, um, you know? And so I had to wait and I got back into it. But when the time was right, I got back into it. There's a time and place for everything, trying to do everything at once. It's only going to make you feel worse about yourself. And for what, right? Why, why do you feel, again, it's gonna go back. Why do you feel that you have to do all of those things? What's that narrative? Where did it come from? How long ago was it? Is it true? Exactly. I think those are the main questions that you want to ask yourself when you're when you're yearning for something you know that you're not bringing your authentic self life is short you want to be you want to feel joy and you're again you're not always going to feel joy when you've got children throwing up and you know you're where the sandwich generation and all of the things that are happening there's yeah. you, there's not a lot of joy in that especially that smell, right? So yeah. you can't expect it all the time, but you have to find pockets for it and you have to see what fills your bucket. Yeah. 100%. And who fills your bucket? It's not just what, but who. Right, exactly. And what are some things that you would suggest for people? Like you mentioned some, you know, do some hobbies, get out there, do the things you like to do, exercise and stuff like that. Are there any other suggestions that you feel are really good for women if they want to, you know, really be able to renew themselves and really be able to clear themselves and clear their minds and be able to focus on who they are and what they really want in life and then be able to have the aspiration to go after it? Yeah, I think that there's a lot there's a lot there. Um, I want to say, you know, one of the things that we talked a little bit about this, but to, to codify it a little bit more, that pattern detection, um, it's about making what's invisible visible, right? And so we have these specific inner barriers that we talked about earlier, and they may be holding us back and we want to break free from them. So now we've reached to the point where we understand that we want to break free from them. Um, right. How do you liberate yourself from all of those things? So thinking about who am I specifically? Uh, what is my belief about myself? What are other people's beliefs about me? How much of that is true? Um, asking yourself those important questions, working with somebody who knows what questions to ask. And then... Mm -hmm. Um, break breaking through different storytelling, changing that narrative, and then also with that, change the mindset. We ha often have a fixed, more of a fixed mindset, and I think that we, several of us say, oh, we have a growth mindset, but when it comes down to it, I mean, there's there's ways that you can evaluate. You know, there's there are th certain things that you can say that are that are actual fixed mindsets, and other things that are just more along the lines of growth mindsets. I'm not explaining this very well. Let me think. Okay, so um, a fixed mindset, right? Is the It's the tendency to relate to abilities that are fixed and not going to change. Um, right. You're either good at it or you're not good at it. Mm -hmm. You either have money or you don't have money. You're either good with money or you're bad with money. Uh, you're good at making decisions, you're bad at making decisions. Uh, stick to what you know. It's hard, so it's not meant to be. Mm. I'm not wanted, I'm not enough, this is unfixable, uh, all of that, right? So we have these deep structures that keep us in that fixed mindset where we feel like there's not a lot of possibility for growth. Right. There's no possibility for development. There's no possibility for evolution. So, and what happens is, and this is something that I think 
sometimes gets a little controversial because I don't think that many of us want to admit this, but we often interpret when we get criticism um, where things don't work out, women look at these as failures and as a reflection of who they are as a person. Mm -hmm. And what that then that what happens is they often conclude that okay well they're not good enough and we're not good enough we don't deserve this because you gave me some feedback and i almost i take it personally that it's your it's an attack against me and that's a very different mindset whereas you may be saying something that it, it's not personal and i i I end up telling myself and a lot of people that I coach, my children, people in my life, that let's think about why this person said this to you. Is this a them issue or is this a you issue, right? Don't make it a you issue if it's not a you challenge. Um, right. And we do a lot of shame-based fixed mindset type of, of things. So uh, for example, I think, what's the statistic? I think research says that we tend to make shame-based fixed meaning out of things 80% more of the time than men do. And it's about who we are as opposed to what the situation is at the time. And then men do the same thing to women as well. So we do it to ourselves and then men are doing it as well. So yeah. I think when you take the perspective of a growth mindset, um, it means that you see your ability to develop and to evolve. Uh, that if you apply certain skills, that if you apply... Um, your talents, if you give it a try, that something might be different. So um, I can say things like, I can use failure as opportunities to catalyze my future success, or right. I can learn from my challenges, or my challenges help me grow, right? These are not necessarily things that we look out for. I think you had asked me a question earlier about what people can do. and and really changing that narrative in our heads to reflect a more open, honest, and not so hard on ourselves approach. Um, I like to try new things and learn. What's the worst thing that can happen? Failing isn't, a, my, one of my favorites is, failing isn't a reflection of my abilities or an indication of who I am as a person. Right. I think just reminding ourselves that I have a I have a board behind me and it says things are going my way. And I look at that every morning and I say things are going my way. I can. Oh, I woke up 10 minutes late. I didn't get to work out this morning. I didn't. You, so there's two ways you can take any situation. Um, yeah. And again, not every situation is going to be that cut and dry. But right. if we go in with the mentality that things are going my way, maybe. Yeah what I thought was going to happen didn't happen for a reason, but am I going to spend the next 20 minutes thinking about that? Or am I going to move on to things that are more productive for me? Right. Right. Um, so I think that growth mindset helps a lot. And that also takes time and energy and effort to develop. And it's very difficult to do that when you've been telling yourself different things, you, you, when you're making the shift to from fixed to growth mindset, you're making you're essentially making this shift from scarcity to sufficiency um, mm -hmm. to knowing the answers to living the answers uh, yes. instead of saying this is a problem what's the creative solution so i think that helps a lot no i definitely don't I do i think that's an excellent point you know your mindset it can change the whole way you 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 look at life, the way you act in business, the way you negotiate, the way you make decisions, you know, when you have a, a mindset and you, you're, you're thinking in a different way where you're, I have a good idea. I have a good service. I have a good product. I am, you know, even if you're working in a team, I am a great team player, you know, and then, you know, you, you had mentioned early on that women tend to have a hard time with negotiation. But if you have a strong mindset and you become and you and you really practice and you practice, you could actually really become a great negotiator. It's just having that mindset, practicing 
and becoming, and you will become, you know, with that great mindset, I think, and with the ability to just practice because Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, you have to really practice all the, and develop these qualities and practice and, and really get them to the point where they are elite. What do you feel about that? You, you said it exactly right. Negotiations is 80% practice and 20% execution. So mm -hmm. we doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter your level in at work, doesn't matter what stage in your life you're at. We if we do the practice and we do the work and we do the research, then we're we're 80% there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a huge thing. 80% pra uh you know, preparation rather. Okay, so it's 80% preparation, 20% execution. And right. that's that's huge. Um, why do women especially not negotiate? It's because, again, they make themselves small. They think that they're not good enough. They don't have the confidence. They don't. They think that if I negotiate my job, my salary, then they're going to take it away. They're yes. not going to take it away. I've never seen that happen. That someone said, "No, that's." I mean, you have to be reasonable, and you have to do the research, and that's part of the preparation piece. You want to be well prepared and very articulate in your ability to present your value proposition. You know, you have to be able to articulate your value proposition um, and why you're a great fit for this role. And if you can do that, there's no reason that you shouldn't get paid your worth. If you can right. do that, there's no reason that you can't get that promotion or right. that project. Um, and I think so oftentimes, and, and the consequences are huge. Uh, right. If you don't negotiate, the consequences are huge. You can leave over a lifetime if you're twin, you know, first job out of college, let's say, and up to retirement, let's say at sixty five. You can you can lose over a million dollars in in earned income. The other yeah. thing that you're losing is your retirement, because right. right. So it's not just the wage gap, but it's also a wealth gap because what's happening is a generation, two generations ago. Men were working, women were not. They were right. building their retirement, women were not. So several yes. women I know who haven't been working don't have a retirement fund now. Right. And so there's the wage gap and then there's the wealth gap. And, right. and if we don't negotiate, we're going to keep perpetuating those, those situations. And that's, again, that's not going to help any of us. No, it won't. It definitely won't. This has been great. I, you know, if we had to take today's whole conversation and we had to like summar summarize it, what are some important factors that you really want to emphasize to the listeners to get across? Hmm. Because we touched base on quite a few things that were really important. You know, what are some of the things you think that really make a difference when it comes to you know, being able to get yourself to that point where you can hit that, elevate to that level of leadership? So I think the fundamental word that comes to mind as you, you ask that question is communication. Mm -hmm. So it's how we communicate with ourselves. It's how we communicate with people in our lives. It's who we include in our lives. And I don't mean communication as in me and you talking. It could, it, right. there's nonverbal communication, there's written communication. There's oral communication, all different kinds of communication. When we're being self-reflective, what are we telling ourselves? That's also communication, right? Um, if we are surrounding ourselves with positive people, what are we telling ourselves? What are they telling us that we're hearing that is really positive and, and helping us to move forward? And yeah. so it's how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others, how you perceive yourself, how you're able to self-advocate for yourself, all mm -hmm. of that comes down to communication and it requires different types of communication skills, but that's what I would say. That learning uh, how to communicate in all of these different modalities to all of these different stakeholders, including yourself, is right. so important. If we are unkind to ourselves, um, how do we change that narrative? So that exactly. the communication is positive. Right. A hundred percent. Now so tell me about in our heads. 
<laughs> yeah, so much is in our heads. I, I, people don't even realize that, that, you know, everybody has, everybody has great qualities in them. We all have different qualities and different characteristics, but everybody has phenomenal characteristics within themselves. It's just getting out of our head. And really, like you said, that growth mindset, changing that mindset and really developing who you really want to be, you know, and really thinking about what that goal, what that objective is, who do you really want to be? Yeah. And who do you want to surround yourself with? Because even on, um, it's, it's exactly what you said. We all bring our own strengths, right? So even mm -hmm. on a leadership team, let's say, if we all have the same strengths, then we would not be very effective. But what you yeah. want to do is leverage each other's strengths so that you can move the organization forward, right? Exactly. You have to have good people who are good humans who are wanting to rise, you know, lift all boats and, and yes. raise everyone. And that's the key. So even as a leader, if you communicate how you communicate with yourself, how you communicate with other leaders, that's also very, very important. Yes, definitely. hundred percent. Now tell everybody about the services that you provide. Yeah. So I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching for early and mid-career professionals who are stuck in, in these different ways and help them overcome and again, change that narrative and navigate some of these obstacles that they're facing so that they can get to the goals that they want to get to. Sometimes they don't know what those goals are. So we start there. And then right. like I was saying earlier, we fill the gaps. What, what gaps are there that we need to fill? And then let's see how we can get you there. And then if we're working together for six months, nine months, a year, two years after we're not working together anymore, what can you do to hold yourself accountable? Because now you don't have me to hold you accountable necessarily all the time, right? right. So I wanna make sure that they're coming in at a specific place, but it's really important to me for my clients to walk away with life skills, not just we're gonna solve this one problem. I want to apply, I want you to be able to apply this and my door is always open for that, right? So, so being able to use the skills that they've learned with me to navigate different aspects of their life and to also be kinder to themselves. So there's a lot of that one-on-one -on -one, and then there's group coaching, which has a very different value where we learn from each other and we learn from each other's experiences and it's a very safe growth container where we're all in it together and we go through different topics. So it might be one week would be imposter syndrome, one week maybe uh, conflict management at work, one might be how to negotiate, um, one might be so many different things, how to silence your inner critic or how to, you know, recognize your inner critic or whatever it is. Yeah. And so we use that and create a, a 90 day, it's, it's about three months. Uh, it's about 12 weeks long. It's a program. And we go through it together as a, as a cohort, very small group so that we can hold each other accountable share our stories, learn from each other, and then have, so there's the academic piece of it that mm -hmm. we talk through. And then there's the, the other piece of it where we're answering questions and listening and learning from each other. Right. As a career coach, I, I saw a great amount of value from learning, from, uh, you know, having my students and, and clients learn from each other. So I use that a lot as well. I love it. And you also mentioned that if they DM you, you have a list that you can send them. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, if if you'd like to DM me, it's uh, on Instagram, rising.tide.consulting. And I'm also on LinkedIn. It's Raina Gandhi. And again, my company's name is Rising Tide Consulting. So it's pretty easy to find me there. But if you DM me the word negotiation, then I'm happy to send you a list of the top five things that you can do to better set yourself up for success when you negotiate. And then if you want to send me growth mindset, I can also send you some of the narrative that you can change within yourself. We can, I have a list of what's fixed and then what's the, uh, the growth version of the fixed. So you can start to recognize some of the patterns that you're creating for yourself that can potentially change. I love it. And tell everybody your website so they know where to go for your website. Yeah. Sure. And my website is a little bit of a work in progress right now, but it's uh, www.risingtideconsultingllc.com. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I thank you so much, Raina, for being on the show. I hope you'll come back and 
And, you know, we could talk more because all these topics are amazing topics. And I'd love to dive in deeper about them because these are great things. But before we go, I, you know, I mentioned this, those statistics. I just wanted to maybe mention them one more time, you know, just to give people a little rain of hope, you know, of people who self-doubt themselves. I, I, you know, I came across this statistic and I thought it was amazing. I was, um, you know, just so women know that, Okay, so did you know that women are taking the world of business by storm? In the U.S., the number of female millionaires has skyrocketed by 61% in the last decade. That's more women achieving financial freedom and making their mark in the business world. But it gets more impressive. Female billionaires have multiplied by a staggering 70% in the past decade, showcased in the unstoppable rise of women's entrepreneurship. And guess what? The incredible momentum doesn't stop there. According to recent reports, the number of ultra high net worth women in the US increased by a remarkable 61%. This means more women than ever are fearlessly leading their way to the top. Now, I don't know about you, but that gives me a lot of inspiration and hope. What about you? Yeah, I I know in my heart that our time, the time for women is is now. And we are feeling the impulse to become everything that we know that we can be. And so really, if we share our tools and our skills and our experiences with each other and we lift each other up and we recognize and celebrate our own unique gifts, I think that we can lift those around us. And we as women absolutely know that a rising tide lifts all boats and that we can support each other. And there's nothing like a group of women to to lift each other up. A hundred percent. Thank you, Raina, for being on the show today. I loved having you on the show. And everybody, if you like this episode, don't forget to follow. And there'll be lots more just like this. We have all different types of self-improvement episodes that will just rock your world. So don't forget to follow, like, and comment. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much, Raina. It's been a great time together.